my last video tonight before I go to bed. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately. Um, I've heard some of the interviews about... Uh, um, one of the things which sparked me was I was just watching this clip, Phenomena, which talked about interconnectedness, and they said, well, why can't we do it? One of the things which they don't show in that particular 30-second segment of the scene are that we're not so interconnected. After John Travolta does that thing, literally he gets swarmed by people going, well, how do you, you know, you're a trickster, and then some people say, how do you explain this, and, and the like, and a whole bunch of people going, please heal, and there's one person in the background before he's overwhelmed who yells, please heal my child. The thing is, which really strikes me as odd about this particular thing, and, and what I think actually, one more issue, which I think dampens the actual, you know, serious discussion of whether or not paranormal phenomena even exist, not counting experiment or bias and all the other issues I've dealt with, and I've already expressed this in some videos before, is the sort of straw man approach, which, well, to quote Ray Hyman from one of the other videos, and to quote from Skeptical Inquirer article, is that the bulk of the popular arguments against parapsychology are all straw man attacks. Penn Gillette, in one of his interviews, said, If psychics existed, they would have warned us all about 9-11. Or if telekinetics existed, they had been stopping bombs or stopping wars and, we, you know, and feeding the third world population and solving the world's problems. And the thing is, what bugs the crap out of me is that that's actually a vestige over of what we're considering the Messiah complex. People who are, who are apparently debunking this sort of thing are still thinking along that mentality, just on the opposite extreme. They've already, you know, they've, they've seen the world's religions, which effectively used to claim messiahs with grandiose powers. They've gotten sick and tired of it, you know, because they've gotten disillusioned with it. And so as a result, they do a sweeping category, effectively of a guilt by association, of anything which might even remotely consider be paranormal or resembling something of this, as being, you know, it must be 100% messiah complex, when that need not be the case. Even the best, um, to quote Michael Shermer, Michael Shermer said, "ESP has been has been uh, in, has been uh, um, ES, uh, statistically significant uh, results have been found in very few controlled studies." Now note that I said in very few controlled studies. That still means that there are a few which have had controls, and even the best studies, you know, even assuming you know, barring all possible flaws, the problem is though is that even with the ones which have been you know, even the worst controlled studies, which have been accused of of flaws and what have you, have only had a maximum of 50 percent accuracy. Rupert Sheldrake's examples being the best. Um, the Otto Gans field right now only has a 30-something percent accuracy. I mean, the thing is that they're nowhere near, they're, they're not even over 50%. There's something, there's something anomalous going on here, but, you know, to dismiss psychic phenomena because it's not 100% accurate, again, it's, it's called the call for perfection fallacy. And the thing is that this is where a lot of this messiah complex is based on. And this connects me to another thing. We still have a religious mindset. Yes, contrary to what people p think. I mean, we have a... It's, it's interesting. One of the most popular arguments I've heard is that regardless of whether or not something is... Uh, rather than actually hearing about serious... Um, you know, serious talking about, like, whether or not some... You know, when people... What, do, what is the, one of the most common things I hear um, when people are looking for a defense against uh, telekinesis when they can't actually debunk a video or when they actually can't debunk a particular psi phenomena? What do they say? They say, go to James Randi's $1 million challenge and win the prize. If you do that, I'll believe you. The thing is that everybody claims to work with James Randi. They throw up James Randi's and James Randi save us, effectively, is what it's being used for. Or Richard Dawkins save us from unreason. Or it's, we are developing new messiahs. In the age of reason and intellect, we're getting the new champions of reason who we're effectively worshipping as gods, de facto. Marx himself was revered, uh, you know, for a certain period of time, almost as if a, as a holy figure or something like that. We look, Penn, Penn and Teller covered this in a, in a video of theirs, which they said had some problems that we, that we tend to view as heroism. It's called the holier-than-thou complex. And, you know, I think, they, I think they had that particular bit right. And we still do that, even in our own agnostic atheist sector. And critical thinking and reason is about ideas. It's about the ideas themselves, and it's about honest inquiry. It's not about automatically, like, just automatically believe blindly what even the skeptics say. We should be questioning our own leaders. Pay it, like, for example, like what I did, where I pointed out the three most major flaws with the $1 million challenge. The experimenter bias problem, the lack of peer review, and the fact that it's the lack of replicability. Um, you know, the, the fact that one prominent example was the case where they tested uh, crystal therapy and kinesiology, where they did uh, the one bag with the crystal and five bag and four bags worth of rat poison. Chance would have gotten it by one in five. But the problem is that technically speaking, there's a preliminary trial and a final trial to deal with the issue of replicability. 
They don't do combined probability on them. Each one's supposed to be statistically significant in its own right. Now, of course, I'm not saying that the $1 million challenge is totally problematic like this. I'm just simply saying that's one example of where something like this has happened and could happen again with the with the challenge. You know, like this is a possible flaw, which is, you know, which has dealt with this issue, you know. And the fact is, though, is that even with that, there would only be two demonstrations. That wouldn't still be a, you know, a series of replicable trials. Every scientific study, ESP or not, requires hundreds or thousands of trials before something is even indicated. The James Randi $1 million challenge, but I digress. You get my point. We still have this leftover vestige of Messiah complex, and again, I've mentioned it in my other videos, and you know, I've mentioned other examples of it. I can, I'm sure, if you if you want, just type down below if you want more examples. I can give plenty more. But the thing is that we still have this. You know, people still. You know, people are worried about a turn to religion. In one of the Skeptical Inquirer articles, they were talking about the hordes of unreason, the raising creationism, and the lack of scientific understanding. You want to know why that is? Because some people are still viewing science as an enemy, as some sort of giant monolith, so they were to reach religion to save them from their own, uh, to save them from the world at large, the cold hard real, um, um, the cold hard world. And where are a lot of the popular skeptical movements turning? They're turning to the champions of critical thinking to save them from the hordes of unreason. It's, it's a so much as I hate it. It's a, it's a, it's a call for perfection, an appeal to authority mentality that even though they maybe have expert testimony in some of these areas, it's almost becoming borderline of a messiah complex, no, not in the leaders, but in the, but in the demand for a messiah in the followers, in the popular mindset. And we've got to remember to avoid that when we're trying to deal with this. It's about ideas, people, not about who you're supporting or about who's spe saying what. It's all about, or about who's saying what. It's all about what's being said. Is it accurate? Can it be proven? The actual rule of critical thinking, is it logical? That's the bottom line here. Let's try to avoid this sort of uh, fault um, looking for messiahs or holier-than-thou complex, shall we? Thanks. See ya.